Alright guys, how are we doing? Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we share stories from Thailand, Philippines and Southeast Asia in general. So if you have a story you want to share or an experience, then send it in and I can get it read out for you. Today we've got a bit of a sad story from a guy who's met a Thai girl online and he flew all the way to meet her. Things didn't go to plan and yeah, so let's jump into this story. Hi, my name is Nick and I want to share my story with you guys. Long distance relationships with a Thai girl can be both thrilling and nerve wracking, especially when it comes to meeting her for the first time. In my story, I'm going to share my personal experience of a long distance relationship meeting that didn't go according to plan. From unexpected surprises to miscommunications, this is a tale of how my dream first meeting turned into a nightmare and the valuable lessons I learned from that experience. Let's begin with how we started talking. I am from Germany, I'm 32 years old and I have a steady decent job. It's not a high up corporate job or anything like that and I'm not rich by any means but it gets the bills paid and a roof over my head. I have never really been in a serious relationship here and always had a thing for Asian women more than any other race. With that being said, I've actually never been to Asia nor done much travelling at all to be honest. Anyway, one night I was bored after work just slouching on the couch watching YouTube and whatnot, when I came across a video of a guy who met a Thai girl on a dating app called Thai Friendly. So I thought, what the hell, it's just a bit of fun to pass time I guess. I create a profile and set the location to search in Bangkok. I was amazed at all these beautiful women on my screen, spoilt for choice on who to message. I find myself swiping like on almost all the girls I seen on there. A few messages here and there with a few of the girls but nothing serious. Most did not want to talk when they realised that I was in Germany and not actually in Thailand. Then this one girl got my attention with her profile. Her name was Benz. Her profile read, in English, Looking for a serious relationship. I have a proper job, never married and never had kids. I am not interested in just fun. It was quite refreshing to see that on the profile as many of the other girls had things such as fun only and nothing serious in their profiles. I reached out to Benz introducing myself and telling her straight that I am not in Bangkok but I am planning to visit when I can. She replied that it's fine that I'm not in Bangkok as long as I don't ghost her if we start talking. We really hit it off after that and found ourselves talking pretty much every night about how our day went and how life is. The time difference was hard but we managed to make it work. She started calling me her boyfriend after a couple of months and I started calling her my girlfriend, though we had never actually spoke about it or made anything official, it kind of just happened. After three or four months of chatting, we decided it was time for me to finally fly there and meet her in person, so we set a date. The anticipation leading up to the meeting was insane. After months of talking on the phone and video chatting, I was finally going to meet my long distance girlfriend in person. I had spent countless hours planning what to wear on our first meeting, what to say, imagining our first embrace and daydreaming about all the fun we would have together. Sat at the airport, my thoughts were interrupted by the announcement that my flight was boarding. I took a deep breath and made my way to the gate. The flight was long and gruelling but I couldn't wait to finally land and see Benz waiting for me at the airport. My heart was racing pretty much all the way on the flight to Bangkok my mind filled with excitement and anticipation. I finally touched down and as I waited in the line to go through immigration, I couldn't help but feel nervous. As I got through immigration, I could feel my heart pounding in my chest. I grabbed my bags and made my way to the arrival gate, scanning the crowd for Benz's face. But as I looked around, I couldn't see her anywhere. My heart sank as I realised she wasn't there. I frantically checked my phone for any messages or missed calls, but there was nothing. Panic set in as I started to think the worst. After what felt like an eternity, my phone finally rang. It was Ben's, but instead of the warm greeting I was expecting, she was yelling at me for being late. I was stunned. I had arrived on time, but she had somehow gotten the wrong information about my flight. The first meeting that was supposed to be a fairy tale moment turned into a complete nightmare. I was stranded at the airport alone and upset. The anticipation had turned into disappointment and frustration and I couldn't help but wonder if our relationship would survive this disastrous first meeting. Looking back on my long distance relationship meeting gone wrong, 
there were certainly red flags that I had ignored leading up to our first meeting. For one, we had only been talking for a few months before deciding to meet in person. While I was swept away in the excitement of it all, I now realised that it might have been too soon to take such a big step. Another red flag was her reluctant to talk about her past relationships. Whenever I brought up the topic, she would quickly change the subject or become defensive. At the time, I didn't think much of it, but looking back, it was a clear sign that she has some emotional baggage that she wasn't ready to address. Additionally, there were times when she would go days without responding to my messages or calls. When I would confront her about this, she would always have an excuse, but I should have realised that consistent communication is crucial in any long distance relationship. Finally, there were a few instances where she would make comments that were a little controlling, possessive or full of jealousy. And again, at the time, I didn't think much of it and brushed it off as her being protective, but in hindsight, it was a warning sign of potential unhealthy behaviour. Ignoring these red flags ultimately led to this disastrous meeting. I wish I had been more aware of them and had taken the time to address them before deciding to meet in person. Looking back, it's clear that we were not as compatible as I had initially thought, and it's important to pay attention to these warning signs in any relationship, long distance or not. The moment when everything started to go wrong was when I finally met my long distance girlfriend in person. After the confusion at the airport, we finally found each other and started our journey to the hotel. I was trying to make small talk and break the tension, but she seemed distant and uninterested. As we arrived at the hotel, I couldn't help but feel disappointed. The room was not what I had imagined, and it was clear that she had not put much effort into planning our first night together. We ordered some food, but the conversation was strained and awkward. Things went from bad to worse when she suddenly announced that she had to leave to take care of something urgent. I was left alone in the hotel room, feeling hurt and confused. It seemed like she was purposely avoiding spending time with me, and I didn't know what to do. The next day she showed up late and barely spoke to me. We attempted to salvage the trip by going sightseeing around some markets and temples, but even that was awkward and uncomfortable. The chemistry that we had on the phone and over video chat was completely absent in person, and it was clear that we was not as compatible as we had thought. The rest of the trip was a blur of uncomfortable moments and awkward silences. I tried my best to make the most of it, but I knew deep down this was not how I had imagined our first meeting. Looking back, I realised that the moment when everything started to go wrong was when we met in person. It was then that we realised that the connection we had online was not the same as in person, and it was clear that we were not meant to be together. After the trip, we said our goodbyes at the airport and I headed back to Germany. As soon as I got back, I blocked her from everywhere. There was no point in trying to make it work after that trip. So even though this is my bad story of a long distance relationship, I'd like to share some advice to anyone that is in a relationship like mine or planning to start one. My failed first meeting in a long distance relationship taught me several important lessons that I believe can benefit others in similar situations. First and foremost, it's crucial to take the time to truly get to know someone before making plans to meet in person. While mobiles and stuff has made it easier than ever to connect with people from all over the world, it's important to remember that the virtual world can sometimes be very different from reality. Another important lesson I learned is the importance of setting clear expectations and boundaries. When you're in a long distance relationship, it's easy to get caught up in the excitement of finally meeting in person but it's important to have honest conversations about what you both want and need from the relationship. This includes discussing expectations around communication, time spent together and what your plans are for the future. Lastly, I would advise others in long distance relationships to trust their instincts. If something feels off or if there are red flags that you've been ignoring, it's important to address those issues before making plans to meet in person. It's also important to remember that not all relationships work out, and that's okay. Sometimes, despite our be best efforts, things just don't work out, and that's not a reflection of our worth or value. So in summary, my failed first meeting in a long distance relationship taught me the importance of taking the time to get to know someone before meeting in person, setting clear expectations and boundaries, and trusting my instincts. While it was a difficult experience, it ultimately taught me valuable lessons that I can use in future relationships. 
So if you're in a long distance relationship, remember to take it slow, communicate openly and honestly, and always listen to your gut. Remember that the journey of finding love is not always easy, but it's worth it in the end. When you're in a long distance relationship or searching for love closer to home, keep an open heart and mind. Be kind to yourself and trust that the right person will come along at the right time. Thanks so much to all those for listening to my story and good luck on your search for love if you haven't found it yet. So what do you think to that guys? When I was reading this, I was thinking like, he's in Bangkok and if it's not working out with it, he should have just left and gone and had some fun for while he's on his trip. Maybe it's just not his type of thing, so. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. And if you've got a story or experience you want to share, send it in and I'll get it read out for you. Till next time, guys, I'll see you then.